parliamentarians have bottled it. She needs to make it crystal clear. Unless we get some progress in the next couple of weeks, we're off. What's your exit deal with the EU? I wouldn't pay the EU anything. What, we don't, so we're in the House of Lords, of which you are a noble member, admitted in its own report that actually we have no legal obligation to pay a single penny. We came up with the expression, no deal is better than a bad deal. The reality is WTO is a different type of deal. It's not no deal at all. It's how most other nations around the world operate. There's a huge opportunity if we leave without the terrible deal. We can take back control faster, sooner, and we can give much more certainty to business. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Richard Tice. Thank you very much for that fantastic welcome. Good evening, Newport. Good evening. That's a good start, isn't it? I'm feeling better already. And good evening, Brexiteers. It's fantastic. Everyone's on song tonight. That's fantastic. Because I need a bit of audience participation. Some of you are standing, but some of you are sitting. But all of you, we need you to make a massive noise that we send to Westminster. So, ladies and gentlemen, what do we want? Do we want Brexit? Yeah. When do we want it? No. Marvellous. We'll have a bit more of that later. But you're behaving well so far. Um, some of you may know, so my name is Richard Tice. Uh, I have a day job. I've, I've been an entrepreneur for many years, running small businesses, medium businesses, and a large multinational billion pound business. I've built thousands of houses, employing tens of thousands of construction jobs, bringing hundreds and hundreds of millions of pounds of investment into this country. But I made a slight mistake. I've been a member of the Conservative Party for far too long. I know, at least I'm admit my mistakes. But I changed that a few weeks ago, ladies and gentlemen. It was, it was a nice email to send to the membership department. Um, and that was when I accepted the invitation to chair the new Brexit party. Now, believe it or not, we only made the decision to launch this party less than five weeks ago. And let's just have a look at, hopefully, if the technology works, the video, the launch video of the party when we started. We have been betrayed. That is why I set up the Brexit party. It's why we're going to fight the European elections on May the 23rd. And that is just the beginning of what is needed in this country. Democracy is under threat. And when politicians fail to deliver, there must be consequences. I was too young to vote in 2016, but now I support the Brexit party because I believe in delivering on democracy. It's time to recognise that actually we are an incredible nation. This isn't about left or right. It's about standing up for our right to be heard. Successful, hard-working, so much to be confident, enthusiastic and optimistic about. That's why I'm supporting the Brexit party. We are a single nation. We wish to remain a nation. They must adhere to the promises made to the people. Let's be optimistic. And for the benefit of our children and grandchildren, if you want a home and you're a Brexiteer, you join the Brexit party now. We can do so much better than currently we're getting from our members of parliament. We want to be an independent, self-governing nation. It's not often that we, he loses his voice, I tell you. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know he hasn't lost it this evening. Join us, um, help us, uh, us. And it's a for us. ladies and gentlemen, just in these four weeks, over 70,000 people have signed up and paid their £25 to be a registered supporter. And if you haven't signed up, please do, because we have a real movement. There is something happening, ladies and gentlemen, because frankly, those of us who believe in this great nation, those of us who are proud of our great nation, who celebrate our achievements, and the greatest thing of all, democracy, we've had enough. 
Enough is enough. This great country has been utterly and totally humiliated by this Prime Minister and this Cabinet, writing, <laughs> writing not one, but two begging letters to overseas leaders and bureaucrats in Brussels as to how we should govern ourselves. There is no greater humiliation, incompetent leadership, incapable negotiators, untrustworthy politicians doing dirty, nasty, backroom deals. <laughs> and a civil service that have shown themselves... I'm going to surprise you, ladies and gentlemen, because later I will prove there are some good civil servants, but more of that later. Um, but generally, a civil service in Westminster that have shown themselves to be completely, utterly incapable of helping this Brexit process. But enough really is enough. This country deserves, as Nigel said on the video, we deserve so much better. And the Brexit Party stands for competent, capable, common sense politics. Because that's what this country needs. And it's been incredible the quality of the candidates that put themselves forward to be our MEP candidates. I truly believe, and we had a meeting yesterday of all our candidates across all the, uh, the regions, I think it's the highest quality list of people who've put themselves up. It's a brave thing to do, but these people have put themselves up to be candidates, and it's a fantastic list, one to be hugely celebrated. And you're going to meet... <laughs> And a lot of them, you know, they've never done this before. And actually, it does take bravery, putting yourself above the parapet. A number of them have taken a significant personal and financial risk. But that is the depth of anger and frustration and irritation at the incompetence of our current governing class. And it's got to change. The... But what's incredible, this movement, this feeling that we've got, has just been the appetite for change. It really is extraordinary. I believe that the country truly is poised for change. And that's why our slogan is, come on, let's, let's change politics for good. We just deserve so much better. Never, ladies and gentlemen, has the opportunity been greater, and never has the appetite been stronger. We know what a great nation we are. So what can we do about it? Well, you'll hear more from the speakers later, but we believe in democracy. Do we believe in democracy? Yes. Are you quite sure? Yes. That's better. A bit quiet at the top there. <laughs> um, so what we need to do to anybody that says, why should we bother voting in these elections, it's absolutely more vital than ever that everybody, yourselves, your family, your friends, friends of friends, vote in this election because we need to send a very clear message back to Westminster. We meant it the first time and we mean it the second time. Leave means leave. Thank you very much. The, the truth is, unlike all the other political parties who viewed Brexit as some form of problem to be mitigated, ladies and gentlemen, let's spread the word, let's spread the great secret that this new party will keep banging the drum on. Brexit is a huge opportunity. It's an opportunity to be embraced. <clears throat> It's an opportunity to be embraced with enthusiasm, with aspiration, with ambition, with confidence, with belief. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, that all requires leadership. And there's not much of that in Westminster, is there? 
But if we achieve our aims and our goals, this can change. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we here and our friends and 17.4 million Brexiteers, we believe in Britain. Do we believe in Britain? Yes. Does the top level believe in Britain? Yes. That's better than not as good as, but we'll get them better later on. So to our, um, our first speakers, so uh, in Wales we've got four fantastic candidates, um, of which we're going to hear from three tonight. The fourth would love to speak, um, but she enjoyed herself so much at yesterday's training day, she lost her voice. <laughs> Hopefully she'll get it back for the campaign trail. But our first speaker uh, is, is well known to you. He's been an MEP for the last five years. He's also, before that, uh, he was a very successful entrepreneur. He employed over 200 people. Please welcome to the stage, Nathan Gill. This is not what we voted for. It said very clearly on the ballot paper to stay in the EU or to leave. It said nothing about arranging a deal. It said nothing about triggering Article 50. It said nothing about any of these delaying tactics. All of these um, claims that they made, not one of them have proven to be the reality. Our economy has boomed, whereas other economies within Europe have gone downwards. It's a national disgrace. And quite frankly, I am furious that this is the best deal that she could get. Quite frankly, my 14-year-old son could have negotiated a better deal than this dog's dinner. Wow, okay, thank you very much. I am getting this feeling of deja vu. Anybody else? Because three years ago, I was stood on this very stage with Nigel Farage during the referendum campaign in this building. And here we are, <laughs> this referendum to end all referendums, this you tell us and we will enact what you say. Anybody remember that? Yeah. What happened to it? Something got lost in translation, didn't it? Well, we're here to say that it wasn't just the English who voted to leave. Wales voted to leave the EU as well. With an amazing 72% turnout, the people of Wales voted 52.5% to leave compared to the 47.5% to remain. But let's just look at that just a little bit closer because of the 22 councils and local authorities in Wales, 17 of them voted to leave. Now, where we are right now in Newport, 56% of the people here voted to leave. That's 41,236 people here in Newport who knew what they were voting for. They knew... <laughs> Just cast your, your, your memories back three years to that ballot paper. It didn't say we will be closely aligned to the EU as closely as possible. We will keep you in the single market. We will keep you in a customs union. We will sign us up to the EU military. It didn't say any of that. Do you want to remain in the European Union or do you want to leave? How many times do we have to say it? Unfortunately, one more time. This is your opportunity. The 23rd of May is your opportunity to send a resounding, get the message, we need to leave and we want you to do our will. Now, can you remember what happened in 1997 regarding a referendum? The devolution referendum here in Wales was held in 1997 with a pathetic 50.2% turnout. 
The Yes for Devolution campaign won with 50.3% of that vote. It was a mere 6,721 votes. And yet, nobody said they didn't know what they were voting for. <laughs> nobody said, well, I think we need to spend three years contemplating this and making sure that you fully understand what building an assembly building in Cardiff Bay is actually going to mean to you because it was jobs for them and they immediately took it and ran with it, didn't they? Yeah. And bizarrely, we've spent the last three years with AMs debating something that's not even devolved. The debate in the referendum. It's bizarre. They've got plenty to get on with. We've got a failing NHS education. <laughs> Naval gazing, aren't they? Bonkers. Okay. I think that what we need to do is use this anger that we have, use this passion that we are feeling, and make sure that we, our friends, our neighbours, everybody understands that this vote on the 23rd of May is an opportunity to get it into the thick skulls of our MPs in Westminster, what we said, what we meant, and that we still mean it. I, I, I just want you to imagine for a minute, okay, that you're in the office of the Foreign Secretary of Great Britain and one of his aides has just come up to him and said, we've got a problem. In a third world country, there's been a presidential election and the president is not willing to stand down and accept the result because he's lost. So. The Foreign Secretary picks up the phone, the phone line straight to this man, this president, and he says, now come on, democracy must prevail. <laughs> the people have spoken, and we ain't going to give you any more foreign aid if you're going to mess around like this. You have got to make sure that your people's voice is heard, and you've got to ensure that this new man becomes the president. You've got to step down. like what you did with the referendum result in Britain. <laughs> We're losing our place in the world. We're, we are losing our moral authority. We are the nation that gave the mother of parliaments to dozens and dozens of countries around the world and they still look to us. And we, the politicians, need to look to you, the people. This is now a battle of the will of the people against the will not of Parliament. And we will win. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Fantastic. Sit, sit grab a few next to me. Isn't it great? Committed passionate and determined, like all of us here today. Our next speaker is a very special person indeed. Although she needs little introduction, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> Hard to know where to start, really. <laughs> but um, she was a Conservative MP for 23 years. But the truth is, that was just her warm-up act. <laughs> because then, 
she discovered Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> and not content with that, she discovered Celebrity Big Brother. Before we welcome her to the stage, let's just watch a video of an inaction. We are in a complete mess. We've got the worst Prime Minister since Anthony Eden. We've got the worst leader of the opposition in the entire history of the Labour Party. And we've got the worst Parliament since Oliver Cromwell. And with that combination, we are actually engaged in the most important international negotiations for 50 years. No, let me finish this sentence, Adam, then over to you. There's a growing disengagement between the people and Parliament. So what I want is an overwhelming, an overwhelming uh, Brexit victory on May the 23rd. Now we've seen That's what I want. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Anne Whittacombe. Britain control her own laws and remain part of the EU? No. Can Britain control her own borders and remain part of the EU? No. Can Britain set up her own trade deals and remain part of the EU? No. And can Britain choose to be governed by her own democratically elected government and stay part of the EU? No. Well, those four no's are why people voted for Brexit in the referendum. <laughs> and the patronising nincompoops <laughs> who say that we didn't know what we were voting for, actually reveal their own ignorance because by voting to remain, they voted for Britain to stay helpless. Yeah. However, we gave them a different answer in 2016. We said we wanted to leave. And lo and behold, both major parties at Westminster stood on a manifesto saying that they would implement the will of the people. And have they been implementing the will of the people? They have actually spent the best part of three years asking the EU for their gracious permission to leave. need their permission to leave. We tell them we're going and if they don't understand it, we can talk to Juncker in a language which he does understand and, and we can say, nous allons, monsieur, nous allons. And that is what we can do. But we can only do it if the way that politics is conducted in this country at the moment changes and changes for good. So our mission in these European elections is a very, very simple one. We have to reaffirm the vote of the British people and we have to send shockwaves through Westminster which tells them that if they don't listen and if they don't deliver 
then come a general election, they may find themselves out. Richard told you that he used to be a member of the Conservative Party. So did I. <laughs> Indeed, it is only seven days since I stood in a Norwegian fjord. Well, I was on dry land. I wasn't actually in the fjord. <laughs> uh, since I stood in Norway and looked around and pulled out my mobile phone and called Nigel Farage. And when I arrived back in Poole, uh, I was met by a member uh, of the Brexit party who said, come and sign your nomination papers. <laughs> one, one month ago even, I would have found it difficult to contemplate leaving a party which I served for 55 years. But that party is no longer serving you. Yeah. It has set out quite deliberately to thwart the express will of the British people and to keep us half in and half out, which is not what we voted for. We voted to leave, and by leave, we meant leave. We meant that we don't want to accept their laws any longer. We don't want to accept their border dictation any longer. That is why we voted to leave. We want to be free to do our own trade deals without asking for their permission. We are a free, sovereign state. That is what we want to be. And if we are not free, and if we do not free ourselves, then we betray the legacy of two generations ago. Yeah. Heavens above, if we'd been governed by this lot, we'd have given up at Dunkirk. We are not afraid of a bit of difficulty because we know the future is bright. And we owe it to generations to come that they should be born and thrive in a free, self-governing country, not in some vassal state. <laughs> And none of us here should rest until the government, and for that matter the opposition, finally recognise what the people wanted and above all recognise their duty to deliver it rather than frustrate it. <laughs> Now that's why I have joined the Brexit party. And, and that is why I am very, very optimistic because I can remember a time when people said there will never be an in-out referendum. Well, there was, not least thanks to the work of Nigel Farage. And then people said, you'll never win that referendum. And Project Fear went into overdrive. And our lords and masters tried to terrify us into remaining subject to the EU. And we told them where to get off. Yeah. 
Are we going to leave? And the simple choice facing our politicians at Westminster is either face that very simple fact and leave, or we'll make you leave. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't she great? Thank you, Anne. What a what an incredible, what an incredible shining example Anne is to all of us and to our great country. It, the, the bravery that Anne has shown, the courage, the determination, and the passion for our country, and the passion for democracy is absolutely incredible. It's awe-inspiring, it really is. The, And the next speaker also has shown incredible bravery and courage from an unexpected quarter. We had over 1,300 applications to be MEP candidates, and there was a small number who were members of the civil service. And I tell you, I tell you, for someone, a very, very senior civil servant, who works here in Newport in Wales, who works as the head of trade for the Office for National Statistics. There we are. <laughs> it does exist. <laughs> for that person not only to apply, but having been accepted to make that courageous decision with his wife and with his family, to say, actually, I'm going to go into the office tomorrow and I'm going to resign my job and I'm going to be kicked out immediately because I believe in democracy. That is quite something, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and, and commands huge respect. So please welcome, we must get him elected as the MEP uh, for Wales as well with Nathan. Please welcome to the stage, James Wells. There's a lot of you here. Good evening, everybody. Yes. I said good evening. Yes. Okay, now before we get started, I'd just like to do a quick poll. Please put your hands in the air if you're absolutely sick and fed up of our MPs and our parliament in Westminster. <laughs> Brilliant, I can identify with that because I've watched over the last 18 months all of the debates in the Commons and all of the votes with increasing despair for our country. And it's made me really angry. And about a month ago, I got so angry at what was going on in Westminster that I went for a walk. <laughs> and it was quite a long walk. In fact, it was more like a march. And I joined the March to Leave. <laughs> And I joined the march because I had had enough. And I met some amazing people on that march that inspired me. 
Some of them have walked 300 miles from Sunderland to London because they had had enough. And this inspired me to want to do more than just stand by shouting at the television every night. <laughs> so last week, I handed in my resignation as Head of UK Trade at the Office for National Statistics, a job that I loved, so that I could stand as an MEP candidate for the Brexit Party for Wales. <laughs> Now there's a lot of people up and down the country that want to talk our nation down. They will tell you that we're not capable of being a free, democratic, independent country. So let me just give you a few figures. Last year, the UK exported £634 billion in goods and services. The UK is the second largest exporter of services in the world behind the United States. In 2016, Wales exported 5.6 billion exports of services to the rest of the world. And last year, Wales exported 17.2 billion in goods to the rest of the world, and that's actually four billion larger than 2015 before the referendum. <laughs> the IMF says real GDP growth will grow next year and every year after until 2024. And as I see from the latest employment figures, Wales now is the fastest growing region in the UK for employment. So don't let anybody tell you that we are not capable of being a free, democratic, independent country, because we are. And do you know why? because we will make Brexit a success. So what you need to do after this evening is spread the word that the Brexit party is here. We stand for democracy and we stand to make this country a free and independent nation once again. But you know what, the most important thing is, make sure you get down that voting booth on the 23rd of May and vote for the Brexit party. Thank you. Thank you. And that is absolutely inspiring. And it, we, it is so important that we get as many MEPs as possible for Wales in the European Parliament, including the very brave James Wells. Our third candidate for Wales is also uh, very brave for standing up, putting his head above the parapets with all the grief that comes with it, the stuff on social media, you know, the friends who may say, why are you doing this? Um, he's a local entrepreneur. He's been a dedicated uh, councillor for some 13 years. And again, we are absolutely determined for Wales to get Gethin James also elected. So please welcome Gethin to the stage. <laughs> Nos with the cast now is. 
Good evening, Newport. First of all, I want to say what an absolute privilege it is to be here on this stage representing the Brexit Party. There's a massive political vacuum in politics today. Actually, all of my vote in life, I voted tactically in Ceredigion, uh, the constituency in which I live, as it's always a two-horse race. It's only in the referendums that I felt able to vote for, I, for what I believe in, an opportunity to get my voice heard and use my democratic right to try and effect real change. I campaigned hard in the EU referendum and was proud to be part of the majority vote to leave the European Union. I truly believed my vote had mattered. But here we are, after three gruelling years of being told that we weren't educated enough to know what we were voting for, <laughs> once again fighting for our voice to be heard. Our politicians lied to us. They put the decision to us in that referendum and told us that it is a once in a lifetime decision and that they would implement our decision they haven't done so. These, election, these elections are our opportunity to show our disgust at their failure to do as they promised. Trust in politics and politicians is at an all-time low and something has to change. That's why our message going forward is that we want to change politics for good and move away from the two-party system. Labour has dominated here in Wales for far too long. Yeah. Let's rock them to their core yeah. and send a clear message that we want them to respect our decision to leave. My freed in newid a trevn blidadol am beth jorchavar Go there yeah just there Isn't it great Kevin and he's absolutely right we've got to send a huge message to all of the existing political parties that have been so complacent. It's time for change, ladies and gentlemen. It is time to change politics for good. This country truly does deserve so much better. We deserve better leaders, strong negotiators, who know how to spend our taxpayers' money wisely, invest it properly. They know how to do things, to get things done, and to make things happen. And that's the quality of candidates that we have, and some of which you've seen today. But we talk about leadership, ladies and gentlemen, and our final speaker, I believe, is the greatest leader this country will soon have. And he has, without question, he's had more influence on British politics than any other politician in the last 70 years or so. So before we welcome Nigel to the stage, let's just remind ourselves of him in action on the video. As if we oh, I'll be any reminding. the Brexit Party into those European elections, as it now looks certain they will happen. Anybody that has ever been in business knows that when you sit down for a negotiation, both sides are prepared to walk away unless terms can be agreed. Westminster used to be known as the mother of parliaments, and here we are behaving, frankly, like a banana republic, ignoring the views of the people. People weren't agreed on what leave right. meant. Right, simple, leave, There was full no stop. manifesto. Leave, leave. full stop, but there is leave no in leave. the single market. Stop. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Nigel Farage. Thank you. 
<laughs> Hello, Newport! I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. I was here three years ago, as Nathan said earlier. I was here three years ago in South Wales, out campaigning in Caerphilly and Cardiff, in Newport, and indeed speaking here on this platform. And I could tell, I knew, despite the fact that nearly all of our leading politicians, particularly in Wales, despite the fact the international global order was telling us, remember what would happen if we voted leave? Indeed, George Osborne, our Chancellor, told us. Oh, I've got better than him coming up, don't you worry. <laughs> George Osborne told us there'd be an emergency budget, interest rates would rise, taxes would go up, half a million jobs would be lost immediately, companies would leave the United Kingdom, plagues of black locusts would descend. <laughs> Well, they might as well have said it. And, but I got the feeling in that week running up to the referendum here in South Wales and around the rest of the United Kingdom, I got the feeling that despite the threats, despite even President Obama coming over <laughs> to tell us that we'd be at the back of the queue, I got the feeling that through all of this, we actually were independently minded people we'd make our minds up and we would vote to take back our independence. And I have to say, as the dawn came up on the 24th of June in London, I thought we'd done it. I thought we'd won. I thought we would. I really did. I thought we'd won. And then the following year, there was a general election in which the leaders of both the Conservative and the Labour parties said, vote for us and we will honour the promise we made to you at the time of the referendum and we will leave the European Union. And nearly 85% and nearly of people voted for them. And I still thought, it's going to be okay, we've won. And then, 498 members of Parliament voted for Article 50. And Article 50 said we were going to leave the European Union at 11 p.m. on the 29th of March 2019 with or without a deal. <laughs> and then I really thought we'd won. And you know, I have never regarded myself as being particularly naive, but even I cannot believe the extent to which our political class in both of our so-called main parties have openly and willfully betrayed the greatest democratic exercise in the history of our country. They told us we were going to leave on the 29th of March, and then Mrs May... And I disagree with Anne Whittacombe very strongly on this point. Anne thinks this is the worst Prime Minister we've had since Anthony Eden. I think she's the worst Prime Minister in the history of our country. She told us we'd leave on the 29th of March. She then told us we would leave on the 12th of April. She then told us we would leave by the 30th of June. And now she tells us we'll be leaving on the 31st of October. Halloween, trick or treaty, I wonder. In fact, our exit date has now got more dates than a child's advent calendar, it seems to me. And here's the truth of it. If we allow this Conservative government and this Labour opposition, 
if we allow them to continue on their current course, we will never, ever get the Brexit that we voted for. And we know what we voted for. I've had enough, had enough of being told that because we voted Brexit, we're thick, we're stupid, we didn't know what we were. We knew exactly what we were voting for in that referendum. So I made a decision. I wasn't, after 25 years of campaigning endlessly the length and breadth of this parliament, I wasn't, after 20 years of doing battle in the European parliament, up against my good friends, <laughs> Herman Van Rompuy, <laughs> Michel Barnier, Eva Hofstadt, and of course, top of the pops, Jean-Claude Juncker. <laughs> I've got to tell you, Juncker, I mean, he's pretty useless before lunch, but afterwards, my God. <laughs> so I've done my bit. I've battled to make these arguments in Brussels. I've battled to make these arguments throughout the United Kingdom. And I have to say, I thought of myself in December, I haven't spent 25 years fighting for this, to be rolled over by a career class of politician who have lied to us, betrayed us. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. So I decided the time had come to fight back and I formed this Brexit party and I vowed if I had to come back into public life this time, no more Mr. Nice Guy, okay? <laughs> and by that what I mean, by that what I mean is this party, this campaign that we're embarked upon, heading towards the 23rd of May, this is no longer for me just about getting the United Kingdom out of the European Union. There is something bigger. There is something far more fundamental at stake here. This is about, this is about what kind of country we are. Are we to be? Are we to be? the kind of free, democratic nation that observes the rules and respects its citizens? Or are we? Or are we, frankly, to behave like a third world country? I promise you, if a vote in an African country was overturned, our political class in Westminster would all be having a fit of the vapours. <laughs> They'd be demanding the United Nations was sent in because democracy had been broken. And yet, this humiliating situation, this most shameful chapter of the democratic history of our nation, it's happening here in our country. And I promise you this, this battle now is not just about Brexit. It's not just about getting us out of the European Union. It is in fact about sweeping away a political class who serve nobody but themselves, who have no This is about changing politics for good. This is about the rebirth of democracy, making it fit and proper for the 21st century. It's about sweeping aside, if they won't listen, two political parties who now serve nothing but themselves. It's about getting a parliament that actually represents the view of the people of this country. It's about readjusting the relationship 
between the people and the politicians. The point is, they think and they behave as if they're the masters and we're the servants. And the process that we're going to begin on May the 23rd is we're going to make them know when we win those elections that we are the masters and they are the servants. So I ask you, are you with us? Will you support us? Will you help us? Are we going to win on May the 23rd? Thank you. Well done. I think it's fair to say, ladies and gentlemen, he hasn't lost his touch, has he? In fact, for the good of our country, we all hope he's just warming up. A bit like Anne, really. <laughs> so, we've got a few questions that people have given us. And yes, politics is, of course, a serious business. But there's no harm in, quite rightly, people have put forward some fun questions. And I'm always tickled by this one. It's come up a couple of times. Nigel, what is your favourite beer? <laughs> Ah, well, I have to say, I do quite like Brains, which, of course, is produced very locally. Um, although I have to tell you, I have cut down a bit lately, and I've lost some weight, and I've been getting fit because... And I said to my family at Christmas, I said, you know something, I feel I've not yet fought the biggest political battle of my life and I was right so I'll enjoy a pint or two but I've got to keep fit because we've got to win and beat this political class who betrayed us got the beer right isn't it <laughs> David from Bridgend asked a very good question of Anne actually if Margaret Thatcher was Prime Minister today do you think she would have honoured the result of the referendum? Would we have left by now? I have absolutely no doubt that <coughs> had Mrs Thatcher been Prime Minister in 2016, we would have been out by 2017. <laughs> I think you could call that short, sweet and clear. Um, so, uh, here's a really important question for Nigel. Will change politics for good, and this is from James in Swansea, will, will changing politics for good mean that we'll stand in a general election and please, and how do we do it? It is possible that if we can secure, with your help please, but if we can secure a great victory on May the 23rd, it is, I suppose, possible that our Parliament will wake up, realise how badly they've done things, and take us out with a clean Brexit. And then pigs might fly. <laughs> <laughs> it just isn't going to happen, and I'll tell you why it's not going to happen. We have a career class of politician in Westminster, in both parties, who are in politics for a career. They have very little to offer the world outside of politics, and they love the embrace of the big politics of Europe. They love the embrace of the politics of the giant multinationals. And they do not, they genuinely do not think that we are good enough to run our own country. I think, I wonder what you think. Do you think we're good enough to run our own country? <laughs> and that's the point. We are lions led by donkeys, in my opinion. That is how I feel about this. And so, and so I believe that it will be necessary, in answer to your question, we are likely 
to get our first electoral test in Westminster in a by-election, which is now pretty certain to happen in Peterborough. There could even be one, of course, in Brecon and Radnor. And we will, the day after this campaign finishes, get ourselves ready to fight a general election. I said to you earlier... <laughs> This is no longer just about getting us out of the European Union. It's about getting, getting back our democracy and getting people in Parliament that will respect the will of the people of our great nation. There's a question from Gordon in Carmarthen. I think this is one for Anne, actually. What do you think will happen if Parliament cobble a dodgy deal together, whereby we leave in name only? Well, if we leave in name only, we haven't left. I mean, that is quite obvious, and this is what they are trying to do, <coughs> and have been trying to do for a long time. If we have to accept any EU laws or rules, then we haven't left. If there are any constraints at all on our trade deals, we haven't left. And until we leave, the Brexit party is not going to go away. And then Dean from Cardiff, he asks a really important question as we face these elections and beyond. How can I get more involved campaigning where I live? Nigel, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, Dean, I mean, look, it's quite simple. Uh, the first thing you can do is to become one of our registered supporters. And isn't it wonderful that in the space of three and a half weeks, there are now 76,000 people who are fully paid up registered supporters of this party. <laughs> and Dean, Dean, successful politics Successful politics is as much about perspiration as it, on this stage tonight particularly, <laughs> it's as much about perspiration as it is about inspiration. And I think in Wales, this is what needs to happen. We all know what a complete mess the Conservatives have made of Brexit. We all know how deceitful and awful Mrs May's new treaty is, and the Conservatives rightly will be punished in these elections. But the real story here in the valleys, the real story in the Labour heartlands, is what Labour have done since that referendum. Yeah. Corbyn, Corbyn promised he'd honour the referendum result. But the truth of it is, this Labour Party is now dominated by a North London Remainer elite. And all the while, he tries to play this game of sort of constructive ambiguity, where he pretends in Islington that he's a Remainer, and he pretends here in Newport that he's a Lever. The truth of it is, in slow motion, the Labour Party are betraying the will of the people. And Dean... And Dean, Lord Adonis, who is now standing against Anne Widdecombe in the West Country... I... Um, given the sort of form she's on, I wouldn't fancy his chances much, would you? But Lord Adonis said, if you're, a if you're a Brexiteer, don't vote Labour. And he's right. And Dean, what I want you to do, please, what I want all of you in this auditorium tonight to do, in the space of the next three weeks, is go out and speak to as many people as you possibly can and explain to them that all four Labour candidates standing here in Wales have all now endorsed a second referendum. They are all Remainers. And in areas like this, 
with traditionally big Labour votes and big Brexit votes. Keep putting out that message, Dean, please, and all of you. If you want Brexit, don't vote Labour. <laughs> One more. It's such a key message. There's an important discussion which actually Janet from Newport just picks up as our final question. How are we going to ensure that the Brexit vote isn't split between UKIP and the Brexit party? And we can bring into that, therefore, the Remain vote and where we think that's going to go. Is our last well, question. well, the Remain vote is, of course, split all over the place. Uh, because the truth of it is the others are all Remain parties in reality. Um, and there is, of course, a new political party out there, very exciting new political party on the scene. <laughs> That's right, Chucker and his chums. <laughs> who utterly bizarre... And, of course, they include... And I am expecting, by the way, the biggest boo of the evening now. <laughs> they do include Anna Subri. <laughs> <laughs> who promised who promised her constituents she would honour the result of the referendum and has then done whatever she can to undermine it also reminds me a little bit too of um, Yvette Cooper and I will within the next fortnight be visiting Pontefract which was 68% leave and Cooper said she'd honour the result and she hasn't done so what was the question again? What was the question again? What was the question again? Um, question again? It was just about the UKIP vote. Then it comes to the Leave vote. There are two parties standing that advocate leaving the European Union. One of them is a party uh, that I was a founder member of, that I was national campaign chairman of, that I was party, uh, that I was party chairman of, and that I was leader of for 10 years, and that, with, and that I, you know, be honest, I was very proud to lead in 2014 into winning the European elections, which was the first time since 1906 that a party that wasn't Labour or Conservative had won a national election. I was proud that we terrified Cameron into making a promise of a referendum. <laughs> I was proud of much of what we did, but I'm sorry to say, all, through all my years, all my years of leading UKIP, I would never, ever allow people into the party who had previous associations with extremism or violence of any kind at all. The party has taken the wrong direction. Its poll ratings are falling off the edge of a cliff. They are becoming an irrelevance. There will not be a split vote. And I think in, in, in the end, history will say that UKIP played a very important role in British politics. But what we've got now with the Brexit party is a fresh start with fresh people. Look at the calibre and quality of those I'm sitting with on this platform tonight. <laughs> and I have to say, James, I think what you've done, what you've done, resigning a well-paid job with good pension rights and all the rest of it, just with, because you believe in this so strongly, it's a message that everyone in this country needs to know. There are still people like this in our country. <laughs> I believe, I believe I can lead, I believe I can lead the Brexit party onto far bigger, far greater achievements than I ever did under UKIP. I'm excited about it. I really believe Britain needs the Brexit party and the Brexit party needs you. <laughs> Is that it? Are we done? Yeah, we're up. Are we done? Right. Other banners. Get Let's have you all on your feet. Get your banners. Lift up your banners. Come on, finish. It's a bit of fun. What do we want? 
<laughs> when do we want it? Now. What do we want? Brexit. Brexit. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Have a very safe trip.